I got this Vivitar lens for free. Uh, it's a camera lens. And I thought I can make a telescope with it, or it's a kind of like finder scope. And uh, this one and a quarter 25 millimeter eyepiece doesn't go exactly on it, but uh, anyway, with a little bit cellar tape, sticky tape, I could fix it into it. And I must say that it's actually <laughs> it's a telescope, you can use it like a telescope. And the only thing is that you have to turn this ring to come to focus. So, quite interesting. <laughs> I may be able to even attach a star diagonal, <laughs> use it like a, a expensive uh, viewfinder. Anyway, this is Japanese style at the moment, so it's quite nice. I'm holding the telescope by one hand, the other hand I'm holding the uh, camera. The rear view is much sharper than that, no chromatic aberration, but here you can see a little chromatic aberration. Probably that's because of the lens of the uh, mobile camera is adding that and yeah you can see the chemtrail from the airplanes you can see the oak leaves so uh, I have to focus it I cannot focus because uh, I don't have a third hand uh, when I use this telescope with a normal eye, without a you know, camera or anything, it's like an apochromatic telescope. <laughs> it's a multiple lens system, so it's definitely doing something to eliminate the false color. And uh, that's it, that works as a... Uh, it's a soligo by the way, it's not a 200 millimeter and uh, divided by 25 of 200 divided by 25 is giving a magnification of 8 so that's practically a, a telescope of uh, 62 by 8 62 times 8 62 is the aperture as you can see here and uh, 8 minutes to my eye when I was holding it with both hands and adjusting on the targets close or far it was color free, no aberration. So practically it's the upper chromat. <laughs> I got an upper chromat telescope for nothing. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> well, I say the scenes uh, and the views through this is so delightful, so clean. Um, usually when you use any binocular, you see purple fringing. I don't see any purple fringing. That uh, video I showed you just <laughs> introduced the, if there is any aberration is introduced by the camera, the mobile phone camera lens. Uh, when you, you view it by normal eye, no, no chromatic aberration, no, no uh, spherical aberration, center to the edge is all clear. It's such a delightful view, bright image. And because this is a lens uh, for camera, it has a diaphragm inside it. This diaphragm can work as a baffle to stop the astray lights. At the same time, it can work to change the F number, which is actually the purpose of it. So you can have a very long uh, tube with this if you use the lower F number, like a um, longer, longer, yeah, longer uh, F number telescope planetary practically we should see and I have now uh, find this little diagonal prism diagonal for camera I may be able to use it for this also hallelujah I was able actually to find the right adapter <laughs> don't ask me what <laughs> adapter I used uh, this is one of the rings which came with my quest or uh, filled uh, Maxotov telescope and I found another adapter from I don't know where some, something else <laughs> I don't know what was it used for it came with another telescope and so I'm able actually now to attach with a compression ring with one of this or, or just a screw another eyepiece an eyepiece to that so all the cellar tapes everything is gone the only thing remaining is that just to wait for the right uh, moment to actually use it in the uh, night sky to see what we, what we can see jupiter probably or the moon 
Now, I think the magnification may be a little bit increased now because the focal length is a little bit pushed back. So, anyway, we will see. I don't expect it to be more than, you know, uh, just 10 times. And if I change the eyepiece, of course, I will have more higher magnification. For example, this is 200 millimeter. That makes it 20 centimeter. And if I use, for example, 10 millimeter eyepiece, that gives me 20 times. If I use 5 millimeter, that gives me, uh, yeah, 40 times. So uh, it depends on what I will be using the eyepiece. So at the moment, I'm just using the widest angle eyepiece. This is practically now a quite posh, <laughs> straight through and, and finder scope. Or is the apochromatic? Because it's apochromatic, I can adjust the you know the focus with. You cannot do that with most of the finder scopes. I can focus with this. So what that means is that I can even attach a here instead of this uh, uh, eyepiece. I can attach a diagonal if I want. I, I, of course, I may not do it because I like the straight through. The purity of the image is much better than using a diagonal, which is an optical element and reduces the light and the clarity of the image oh hallelujah i can see the moons of jupiter with the 10 millimeter uh, eyepiece and this soligor uh, lens which is uh, yeah 20 millimeter And focal length, I think, uh, yeah, 20 millimeter, 20 centimeters, sorry, 200 millimeter, 62 millimeter eyepiece, uh, 62 millimeter lens, and that's the planet Jupiter. In this oh, that's so exciting! It comes to clear focus, nice. And it's a finder scope that you can use actually. <laughs> I have to find an adapter for it, a ring or something to attach it. Oh, hallelujah! So, I used this telescope last night on the planet uh, Jupiter uh, with a 10 millimeter eyepiece, which is uh, here this uh, 10 millimeter one. I could see the moons of the Jupiter easy and it was yet very wide angle. Um, with the 25 millimeter one, uh, you could barely see them, but yet, uh, anyway, I prefer the 10 millimeter for that. But it's very wide angle when you use this one. Then I went uh, earlier in the, after the midnight, there was some gap in the clouds. I could see the Orion, constellation i could uh, see the m42 beautiful amazing belts of the jupiter beautiful it's upside down the image so for when you see uh, you want to go down from the belt of Ju uh, orion actually it goes up so you have to remember the direction is a telescope it's a real telescope it's not not a terrestrial one it's a real telescope astronomical telescope and Beside that, there was no color fringing, the stars were sharp, pinpoint. I looked at the Castor Pollux, I looked at the uh, Sirius, the brightest star in outer sky. I looked at the Pleiades, the cluster, beautiful. With 10, uh, 10 millimeter, it was really lovely. 25 millimeter was very, you know, wide angle. Uh, it's kind of a smallish, like as if you just with a normal camera you have photographed it. But with the 10 millimeter, I had a good magnification. I could see all most of the stars in that, all those chains of the stars, uh, like diamond in the velvety background of the sky. I could see that. Okay, to be able to use this eyepiece with this, uh, first I used the cellar tape as you saw it. Then uh, I found this adapter in my um, a camera attachment for the Questo, but I know that this is a very common thing. You can find it in any camera attachment. Easily goes on this thread, 
this side of this and then this side of it goes into one of these uh, eyepiece holder things uh, I got it from another camera attachment probably for eyepiece or something else um, and I can you now easily attach any eyepiece to this or I may go next time just try a you know teleview panoptic with this who knows it gives me the biggest widest field of view this is practically in my experience now is like a Takahashi 60 millimeter refractor and uh, the lens is very good I don't see any chromatic aberration it's several elements inside it it has a good uh, you know baffles inside it it's really old made soligo uh, is a 1 to 35 f um, focal length 200 millimeter and the diameter of the main is 62 millimeter so practically it's really good in that sense is a good size refractor it has even a retractable uh, dew shield uh, really nice and this stays where it should be so easy to use i can also adjust the diaphragm there's a diaphragm here you can use adjust the diaphragm make it smaller or bigger and that keeps the stray light away and uh, beside that you can zoom uh, focus on the actual scenery really good uh, I, i'm really happy with this i'm just thinking about uh, finding a way to permanently be able to attach it with a vixen dovetail or anything with a piece of wood attached to somewhere here holding it with a jubilee probably clip uh, being able to attach it to a vixen dovetail and then uh, put it on a, a sky tee or any other you know uh, telescope mount and this is the way it will look like if i attach a teleview panoptic 24 millimeter and it fits easily in hand let me hold it like this takashi one and that's it you have a refractor a powerful refractor cheap the eyepiece uh, cost through probably anything between 200 to 350 350 yeah and the uh, lens probably nothing or at the most five pound or something like that so quite <laughs> quite quite a competition for takashi takashi if you get a uh, one of those 60 millimeter ones which is two millimeters smaller than this beginning you will have to pay probably around 800 pounds just for that just for the tube then all the attachments everything adds to that as we say in astronomy the best telescope is the one you can use so the smaller the better if you can uh, you know comfortably use it and this is a very wide angle depending on the telescope uh, ips you use uh, this is really can be really wide angle or a planetary if you use a smaller eyepiece. So probably I can easily use a two and a half millimeter TMB planetary in this. And I will try that. Why not a Vixen HR and 2.4 millimeter also is another option. I will try all of that when I have a mounted something here. And when everything is assembled, this is how it looks. I think this is better than a finder scope because the image actually you can focus on it with the finder scopes most of them or probably all of them nearly you can never focus you can focus with this and uh, and then it has multi elements it's not just single singlet or anything like this multi element lenses in here there's very good baffles inside it there's a diaphragm inside it you can change if you want to see details on the planet and you use a planetary uh, a low focal length IPS can actually dim the light and see details for example on the Jupiter's cloud beds so perfect for this purpose I'm really excited about this to use this I have a bigger one than this and I'm going to also try with that one and see how it can be I may find a different adapter for it or just use what I have here on that one and then close this one with a cap or something when I'm not using it and the size wise is just uh, slightly uh, yeah bigger than 20 centimeter so quite compact you can lift it put it in your bag and just take it yourself anywhere 
and if you have a if you have find a way to attach it to a dovetail uh, bar that makes it perfect telescope for using uh, in any situation beside the binocular binoculars uh, can be nice but this is also monocular is very good but you know and it has less element than a, a binocular these binoculars have also uh, prisms and they can also introduce some false color eventually